Well, good evening and welcome to our module two live session. Uh, it is 630 Central Standard Time, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. I realize that there might be some people coming in, but I want to make sure to respect everybody's time. As we get started, I want to do a quick sound check. Can everyone hear me okay? And can everybody see the PowerPoint okay? Perfect. I got two yeses in the chat. Awesome. It looks like we are in good shape. So um at this time and well you guys are both chloe and teresa you guys are both on um at this time just yeah continue to mute your microphones um just as it cuts down on the background noise and then uh you guys could unmute it your microphone at any time you want to participate um in the conversation so um so yeah welcome um Tonight's agenda looks like this. Uh, we will get to know each other a little bit uh, with welcome and introductions. Uh, then we will um, talk a little bit about how the class is going, uh, the live session, uh, classroom expectations, scoring rubrics, uh, the APA guide. Uh, the module two assignments um, for this week, uh, the planning cycle, and then uh, if you guys have any questions uh, for me, um, yeah, uh, you could ask it at any time. I mean, at the end, you could ask them too if they come up or if you don't think of anything until this week when you're doing your assignments, you could always uh, either shoot me off a text or you could shoot me off an uh, email. I'll actually be looking at my texts a little bit more um, just because um, I will be moving actually out of state this week. So uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that when um, when we're checking in or in our welcome and introduction. So uh, I'm going to continue on. Um, so. I wanted to share a little bit about myself and then hear a little bit about each of you guys. So I'm originally from a small farm town in northeastern North Dakota. Um, it's actually called Michigan, North Dakota, uh, between Devil's Lake and Grand Forks on Highway 2. Um, some of you might know where that is. Some of you might not know where that is. Uh -huh. I'm currently, for two more days, <laughs> living, well, actually, three technically i'm currently living in denver but i am moving to grand rapids minnesota this week to take on a new role as a as the director of education uh for head start in itasca and kuchichin counties um so it's really excited time in my life uh, as i move up into my career um and taking on a really big role as the director of education there. So it's a little nerve wracking, but yet um, it's a lot, especially when I'm moving my family all the way out uh, cross country, but it'll be good, I think. And I'll actually be closer to my family, which is a great thing too, as well. Um, sorry, I kind of went on a little tangent. <laughs> yeah, Teresa, you said that you're from North Dakota. Where in North Dakota are you from? Well, you could share that later, <laughs> sorry. Minto, you're not that far away from me. Uh, Minto's not that far away. So you're by Grafton, the Grafton area. Awesome. Um, <laughs> and Chloe, you're originally from Denver. Oh, that's great too. That's awesome to see that. Uh, <laughs> see, it's it's a very small world out there. <laughs> um. Uh, so I'm going to keep going on. What was my favorite toy and why? Um, so my favorite toy uh, growing up was a My Buddy doll. Um, my aunt and uncle gave me that. I loved it because it had blonde hair, and I really wished I had blonde hair. A lot of my friends had blonde hair growing up. Um, and, you know, kind of in the Norwegian country over there in North Dakota. Uh, so I really wanted to look like them. Um, and I kind of felt odd 
out of place because I had darker hair and brown eyes, but that's just a little bit about me. Um, yeah, I'm going to open up the conversation and um, it looks like it's just us, Chloe and Teresa. Feel free to unmute your microphone and talk a little bit better when you have interaction between each other, um, you know, between yourselves. Uh, yeah, and just, you know, share a little bit about, uh, well, you guys already talked a little bit about where you're from, uh, and type of degree you're pursuing and your favorite uh, toy as a child and why. Um, also, if you're viewing this recording, please answer these questions as well. Um, as I, one of the expectations of the class is to answer if you can attend the live session, but you're answering the same questions in paragraph format. Um, so yeah, uh, Chloe and Teresa, hi. <laughs> Well, like I said, I'm Teresa. Um, I live in South Dakota. Um, right now, I am in an early childhood degree, but I think I'm switching from fall semester um, to human services, but I'm not 100% sure yet. Nice. What do you do? Um, can you remind me again what you do? Um, um, I at the Life Skills and Transition Center in Dawson. Um, the youth that are like 13 to 19 was severe disability. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing, uh, Teresa, and welcome to class. And my favorite uh, as a child was my cuddles. On sorry, say that again. You're kind of cutting out. My favorite toys as a child were the mud puddles. On the oh, nice. I don't know if I'm too familiar with those. No, mud puddles, like water and mud. Oh, mud puddles. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Yes, I'm familiar with those. Growing up in North Dakota, you have a lot of mud puddles. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you for sharing. Um, looks like Chloe is pursuing a degree in early childhood education. Her favorite toy was a Barbie dream house. Her, uh, her sister, uh, her and her sister used to play with Barbies every day as kids. Yes, Barbies. I have a little girl who loves Barbies and she plays with Barbies all the time, which is, um, I guess maybe a girl thing. I don't know. I know my sister didn't play with Barbies growing up, but oh, my my little one likes to play with Barbies quite a bit too, as well as she is four years old as well. Well, welcome ladies. Just want to say thank you for sharing um, and welcome. Uh, I wanted to check in with you guys, um, uh, especially for you guys that are not online tonight. Um, want to know how are things going with the class are you guys able to navigate through the course modules discussions all that other stuff uh weekly announcements syllabus resource tab um one of my suggestions is to practice and play around with the blackboard um if you're not really familiar with it i always say sometimes our best teacher uh is ourselves so you know, that's one of the things um, with these online courses is, you know, playing around with it um, and just trying to become as familiar as much as you can with it. Uh, so, yeah, and I will be talking a little bit about APA format. Um, uh, it'll be covered a little bit later in the live session. Um, so, yeah. So, how are things going? Uh, so, uh, Teresa said things are going well. Everything is laid out so well as far as the class goes. Uh, and Chloe said this is my fifth class online with Rasmussen, so I'm very familiar with the layout. I'm glad that you guys are really familiar with how the layout is. Um, you know, if you guys don't, if you guys have questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, like I said, this week is kind of wonky for me because I'm actually moving across country 
Um, and uh, by the way, I apologize if you hear any noise. I have a plumber that is going to be coming in and out of the house. So if you hear some banging, um, he's just fixing something. Nothing is wrong. <laughs> um, so we're trying to get everything kind of squared away um, before we actually leave. But as I was saying, getting a hold of me, um, one of the quickest ways to get a hold of me this week is usually by text if you have anything um, that you need questions um, answered for. Um, so yeah, uh, so I'm glad everything is going well. Um, like I said, if you have a question, please reach out. Um, no question is silly. Um, we all try to learn from each other. Um, so yeah. Um, uh, so I wanted to go over quickly the live classroom expectations. Um, it's really expected for you guys to make every effort to attend each live session and participate. Um, I appreciate uh, Chloe and Teresa, you guys coming, being taking time to be part of tonight's live session. Uh, if you can't ever m attend the live session, you, you will need to view the video uh, in the live session discussion forum and then respond to the posted questions to earn full points. And then if you are present at your our live session, you are expected to contribute to the class conversation in order to receive credit, um, which most of you guys um, do that anyway, so it's not a, shouldn't be a big uh, thing. Um, I also wanted to reiterate that um, there will be three of them. Uh, I think the next one is August 31st um, at 6.30 Central Standard Time. So yeah, if you can't make it, like I know a lot of you guys can't, um, you know, just because Rasmus in college, um, you know, doing online learning, everybody has different jobs and, you know, just the time zones are a little bit different. Um, so, you know, try to make an effort if you can, if you can't, um, you know, there, I will be posting it the next day. So you guys could have a chance to look at that. Um, and respond to the live session questions. Uh, so the scoring rubric, um, I think all of the assignments are graded on based on a rubric. I, I just wanted to make sure that you guys all know how to access the rubric so you can make sure you meet all the criteria before submitting this, an assignment. Um, <clears throat> to view the rubric for each assignment, just click on the assignment title under the assignment tab in each module. Um, and then towards the upper left side, you will see a box with the total points possible listed. And in that box under the total points, there will be a button that says view rubric. By clicking on that button, a new window will open with scoring rubric. Please use the rubrics to your advantage to ensure that you receive the most possible points for the assignment. Please know that there is no rubric attached for the discussions. However, if you do create a substantial post that answers the prompt questions, uh, respond to any questions I asked you and respond to at least one peer with a concise paragraph to expend their learning, then you should receive full credit. Um, another thing I really wanted to reiterate to um, is I expect a lot of um, I, I really expect the chance for you guys to do your work and master it. So having said that, if you decide to submit your assignment early in the week um, and for some reason, you know, you bombed your assignment and you didn't like it. Uh, you'll have a chance to redo it again. As long as you can get it done by Sunday at 11.59 Central Standard Time, I'll give you an opportunity to redeem uh, your grade. So, you know, um, I understand people uh, make mistakes. Sometimes you don't understand the material, right? My goal is to help and work with you guys. So I really want you guys um, to get the best possible score. Um, having said that, you know, if you don't like what you have, um, you could submit it again. Um, 
so yeah, that's just a little bit uh, about the scoring rubrics and assignments. Um, however, if you submit it uh, on Saturday um, or even Friday, I might not get to it till Saturday or Sunday. So then you might not uh, be able to submit it um, right away and to get a better grade. So. You know, biggest thing is uh, try to be proactive and really look at your schedule to make sure um, that you're that you're actually uh, looking um, that you're actually focused on the due dates and looking at the calendar. Uh, Teresa has a question: How long are the live sessions typically? Just curious for planning purposes with my work schedule. So basically, I try to get them done in forty-five minutes. Sometimes it goes longer, sometimes it goes shorter. If it's just you guys and you guys usually don't have questions, it'll go pretty quick. Sometimes 30 minutes, sometimes, yeah, usually 30 to 45 minutes, sometimes an hour, but if there's only a few students, then it goes really quick. Uh, APA format, so basically, Real quickly, to ensure the consistency and precision for students and instructors, Rasmussen has chosen APA style as the standard documentation citation uh, style to be used in all the courses. The APA style provides for clear references in the text and at the end of the document. Uh, by using the APA common style in our classes and assignments, Rasmussen seeks to streamline the documentation component of the information in a uh, literacy process. If you guys are unfamiliar with APA gu guidelines, which some of you may, I know uh, Teresa and Chloe you probably are not. Um, you probably are familiar with them. Uh, if you, But if you are unf unfamiliar with the APA guidelines, you could check out the Rasmussen APA guide in Blackboard. Uh, from the homepage, you will see library resources. Um, uh, from the home page, you click on the far right tab on the top of your screen that says resources. And then the center of the column, you'll see library resources. And the fourth link down, it will say APA guide. Uh, click on the link and it will open a uh, Rasmussen APA reference center that has all the information you will need for APA formatting. Uh, you can use the menu on the left side of the screen to jump to the specific APA formatting information that you need. So, um, yes, play around with it. If you don't know, uh, play around with it again. Um, come back to this uh, uh, slide if you need to for your reference. Uh, now I'm going to dive into some of, wanted to review some of the assignments that you guys will be doing this week. Um, this is pretty crucial for, um, because there are a lot of assignments that are due. I wanted to take a little bit of time to go over each of them. Um, so in order to submit an assignment, uh, you want to click on the title under the assignment tab in each module, scroll down towards the bottom and select the file from your computer that you would like to submit. Select open, be sure to click the submit button once you have uploaded your assignment. Uh, and then please note that 10% uh, of the total points will be deducted for each day that it is assignment is late. Uh, please see the course uh, calendar for all due dates. I do understand things do come up, um, but try to be proactive as this is a five and a half week course um, and it goes quick. And if you don't get assignments in, um, you could fall behind very quickly. Um, so having said that, we have the module two discussion for this week. So we will have four assignments. Uh, the first one uh, tomorrow will be your initial discussion post uh, that will be due uh, uh, Tuesday, August 18th at 11.59 Central Standard Time. <clears throat> Basically the discussion, as you know, prompts, uh, prompt talks about the planning cycle um, and it provides a scenario with questions to answer. Remember to do an initial discussion, um, like I said, by Tuesday, and then to reply to at least just one of your peers. 
uh, initial post uh, and any follow-up questions I may have for you by Saturday night at 11.59 Central Standard Time. It's a little different with the discussion post as the discussions responses need to be in by 11.59 Central Standard Time. Um, the second one that I'm gonna talk about uh, is a written assignment. Uh, uh, it's a written assignment of the observation of the child. Uh, for this assignment, you will begin the planning cycle by researching and using an observation or assessment resource to complete in one hour long observation of a child. Uh, basically, the purpose of this observation is to gain background information, which will, you will use in the later modules to create a meaningful learning experience of the child. Uh, one of the, the things I wanted to note um, on this assignment, uh, that this assignment is asking you to observe a child for an hour. If you are unable to do that, please use the link to view the video and then respond accordingly. Um, I know sometimes that uh, with COVID and everything, sometimes centers are shut down. So use that if you have, if you're not working with a child or um, if you need uh, any assistance for that um, assignment. Uh, and then just make sure to reference at least one source regarding the observational methods in your assignment. Uh, and then also always make sure that you refer to the rubric to ensure that you meet all requirements for the assignment, including the APA formatting. Uh, the third assignment um, is the course project lesson plan, part one. Um, the third, uh, hold on, before I go there, I think we have a question. Do we need to put our recorded observations in the paper? Uh, yes. Uh, so whatever you observe, you want to put in. Um, I will double check what the rubric uh, says. Um, basically, just follow the rubric. Um, it, I think it says that, but I'm not 100% sure. Slowly, I will get back to you. But if you look at the rubric, you probably could see specifically what I'm looking for. It might or it might not. I, I, I honestly, I can't remember off the top of my head, but that's something I could get back to you um, and let you know. Does that answer your question? I'll just get back to you. Okay, perfect. Um, so the, for the course project uh, lesson plan part one, uh, that's the third assignment for the week. Uh, what you're going to do is you'll want to reflect upon the observation you completed earlier in the module and then recall that the purpose was to gather information and create a comprehensive learning plan to support the development of uh, your subject. So the first step in completing the comprehensive lesson plan in part one this week is to create a developmentally appropriate learning objective for the child you observed. So <clears throat> the fourth one, the exploration assignment um, is for module two, is to uh, complete the assignment. Uh, first, you wanna watch the video provided to explore this key area of practice and how it can be applied in the field to early childhood education. Um, use the provided template to complete the assignment. Uh, you'll be completing an exploration assignment each week in the course, so make sure to take time to read thoroughly, read the instructions, uh, and review the rubric as you will have the same format exploration assignments each week with different videos each week. Uh, the one thing I really want to point out with this is the biggest error I see uh, students make on the assignment is not providing an aha a moment uh, in question three. In this question, I'm not looking for your favorite part of the video or what you liked. I want you to share a new perspective or insight you gained from the video. Uh, your answer to each question should be a paragraph long with specific reference to the videos. Basically, this is just an opportunity to you to practice your observation skills as well as apply the book knowledge 
you're learning in the course into the everyday classroom experience. Um, each week, we'll have different key area focuses that will re be represented in the videos and that you'll ref reflect upon. This week, you will be looking at, I think, how, I think it's how observation and assessment drive develop developmentally appropriate uh, lesson, lesson planning. Mm, I have a... Question, I think from Teresa, can I observe the youth that I work with since the activities they participate in are more younger age range? Yes, that's fine, Teresa, if that's completely fine. Um, you know, if it has anything to do with uh, birth through eight, and if it's, you know, fits that developmentally area, yeah, it's com I'm completely fine with that. Um, <clears throat> the planning cycle. So let's move on to the planning cycle. I know that was a lot of information, um, <clears throat> but I just really wanted to share uh, each one of them in detail since this is our first um, live session. And like I said, if you're not on top of this stuff, it, it you'll fall behind quickly. Um, so if you're having trouble, reach out to me as soon as possible so we could work with you uh, to come up with a game plan. Uh, best support your needs. Okay. Um, I'm going to go into the planning cycle. Um, so basically, uh, I want to dig in a little bit. Uh, when we talk about the planning cycle, it could get a little confusing for people um, when I teach this course, but I just want to make sure that you guys understand it um, before actually going into the field and actually implementing. Um, so when you're plan during the planning cycle, the very first thing you really want to do is you want to identify your subject, identify. And what I mean by that, before planning any kind of curriculum, um, it's really important to plan for whom you are planning. So you want to consider the following reflection questions as you choose your subject. So you want to you want to know what do I know about the child's development progress areas of growth home life and interests and then what do I want the child to do or learn as a result of the lesson so basically that are the, you know that's the kind of things that you want to keep in mind when you're identifying your subject I mean you want to make sure to get to know the child's home life interests culture Etc. development progress if you can. And then what you want to seek out of what do you want the child to learn um, as a result of the lesson. So it's really important to understand this information so you can set attainable outcomes for the child as you develop your lesson plan. Uh, the next thing that you really want to do is you want to plan. Um, that, now that you identified the subject with some background information, about the child's development progress, home life, et cetera, um, interests. Uh, planning should include aspects such as materials needed, step-by-step -step instructions, transition and support strategies, and environmental consideration. Uh, writing out your plan is a really a good way to help, you know, help and see it go all together. So, um, that is something to really keep in mind. Um, and then your implementation of your plan. Basically with this, uh, you wanna make sure, so basically your implementation of your plan will only be effective if the child is actively engaged with your plan. So when I say about that, I mean, for each, you know, usually children, uh, free choice time during play based learning is a really good example for early childhood professionals to give opportunities for the child to investigate and discover new skills and understandings. So basically, you want the child to be interested in what you're doing. Um, the last thing you want the child is to be bored because then they're not going to do anything and then you won't actually really get to see 
uh, their skills and what they can or cannot do. Um, and then the next thing is observing, um, being cognizant while each activity unfolds is really imperative of the rest of the cycle. We ask the question as professionals, what is working, what is not working, what learning is taking place, and how do I know? So during your observation time, you should be taking a lot of notes of your observations. There are different ways for taking notes depending on what you are looking for in the behavior of the child. Um, so yeah, we that's something that we uh, we'll look at too, um, you know, there's different ways of, of observing. Um, and then the next thing is adjusting and differentiating. Each lesson can always expand growth. As educators, uh, we need to reflect on how we can continue to meet individual learning and developmental needs of the child. Um, how can we adapt the lesson to ensure you accommodate diverse learners? And then finally, what are the next steps we can bridge the lesson authentically into the child's home and community? Uh, as we know, the learning process doesn't end at school and it's really our job as educators to inform the parents and guardians of these children what we are doing so we can share that information with the parents at home. Uh, this really does help the child master the outcome when there is dual support and it really helps build the child's strengths so they can scaffold their learning. And the next thing we talk about in the planning cycle is assessing. So to complete the planning, we must reflect on the lesson effectiveness. First, were the learning outcomes met? And how do we know? Uh, what does the child know now? And what are the next steps in the child's development, learning, and goal, learning goals? Uh, so a lot of uh, informative assessment um, can be used for this to assess. Um, also, you guys, uh, the very last thing um, for the planning cycle would be to repeat the cycle and reflect. So what could have changed so the lesson could have been more effective? Um, maybe you didn't gather much information on the child uh, likes, interests, family, lifestyle, etc. So basically, you know, it's important to get as much information as you can to meet the outcomes that are attainable for the child. Um, having said that, uh, and if you're viewing this uh, recording online, uh, the question that I have for you guys is, do you currently use the planning cycle as an ongoing process? Um, and how do you think that will affect your teaching practices? Um, like I said, if you are viewing this on a video, please answer the two questions when you submit the live section uh, part of your assignment. So yeah, what are your guys' thoughts? Yes. Behaviors do change daily, and we do have to adjust accordingly. Um, it's always good to have a backup plan when your lesson doesn't work the way you want it to work. So Chloe said that she, when she was working in a center, she she did use the planning cycle since the pandemic. My center closed, and I'm working as a nanny. I do use the planning cycle when the planning activities for the little girl I nanny for. It is an ongoing process for sure. Uh, observing daily and planning overnight or on the weekend. Yes, it's it's continuous. Um, my wife actually has in home. Well, we this is like the last week of the in home daycare that we will have. Um, and yeah, it's it's definitely an ongoing. Um, ongoing um it's definitely ongoing for sure and you know different demeanors each day the children might not come in wanting to do anything and you know it's trying to really get them to do uh the activity that you prepared and you know like i said with Teresa having a backup plan just in case that they're not interested in what you have to do and you know being accommodating to their needs is really 
really, really big. And that's pretty much all that I have for you guys. Um, I'm not going to keep you any longer. Um, I do appreciate your guys' time, uh, Chloe and Teresa, taking time out of your night to uh, meet for a live session. Um, if you are viewing this recording, yes, you will see this posted uh, tomorrow, um, which will be Tuesday. Um, and then, yeah, please answer any questions that you uh, that I posed in this live session uh, to Teresa and Chloe um, in paragraph format. Um, Teresa and Chloe, since you're on, do you guys have any questions? Sorry. I know it kind of went a little fast. Good. I'm glad it was informative, Teresa. You know, I'm trying to make it as quick as possible. And Chloe, you said that you have all your questions asked. Yeah, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Like I said, this week is a little crazy because I'm actually moving across country. So shoot off an email um, or you, I will check my email every night. Uh, but, you know, I'll be really looking at my text messages. So if you have anything that you want to ask, shoot me off a text, I will usually get back to you um, faster than probably an email. Um, yeah, up until about Thursday, Thursday night, I'm actually leaving. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'll probably be a lot on the road. Um, so yeah, if you have questions in between that time, yeah, feel, feel free to shoot off a text. If I don't know the answer, I will get back to you um, um, within that day usually. Um, and if you guys don't have any questions, have a great night, a great week, um, and stay safe.